Okay, so here is another um, digital activity that has been super fun um, both to create and also to do with my students. So um, it is a pixel activity also using Google she um, Sheets. It's not a pixel activity, it's a puzzle activity. Very much like the pixel activity, but instead of using conditional formatting, you are using those um, very powerful um, formulas. So I just want to show you a few examples. These are some of the ones that I have actually used um, in my class. The one that I am going to show you how to create today is for uh, more basic um, multiplication skills, just for the sake of not making this video endlessly long. Um, but you can change the content around, and I am going to show you some tips and tricks um, later on. So the first portion of the video is going to be just that creation and how to get started. If you want to learn how to make it pretty, how to hide formulas, if you have high school kids um, and things like that, you can definitely stick around till the end. I'll try to post in um, the description where everything's at so you can fast forward to the places that you're interested in. So um, just a little bit of how it looks. Just like the pixel activity, students would start off with um, a blank canvas. Right, so those puzzle pieces aren't there. You give them this blank and they start solving the um, puzzle and as they're solving um, every one of these problems, the puzzle pieces automatically appear. So for example, number three, the answer is five. So let's say they had the wrong answer. Nothing happens, right? So they do need to have the correct answer and then those puzzle pieces do automatically appear and then in the end reveal a picture. Because I do teach um, high school, I do like to keep these two memes. I just feel like it makes it relatable. It gives them a little chuckle. Um, but other than that, you can definitely use any picture that you want. It doesn't have to be a meme. It could be a class photo or uh, maybe something that is particular to whatever you're teaching, right? If it's um, Spanish, maybe you want to include a Latin American country. Um, or if it's history, you want to include a president, right? So whatever it is that your content is, you can definitely personalize that to a picture and it's so much quicker than creating a pixel um, picture from scratch. So it does take a little bit more um, expertise when it comes to Google Sheets, but I will give you all those formulas. And once you have a basic one created, all you have to do is copy and paste and then you can change the picture around. If you put the picture in the same place, you don't even have to worry about changing the formula um, around much. So um, we're gonna go ahead and get started straight from scratch. So I'm gonna create a new spreadsheet. Brand new spreadsheet, this is what it looks like. I am going to title this Multiplication Facts, um, zero through nine, puzzle, or yeah, puzzle. Okay, so you are going to need two sheets for this. So I'm going to um, add another sheet here. So using this little puzzle, I'm gonna add a sheet. If you are planning to hide the formula, like this is for little kids, so it doesn't really matter, but if you um, wanted to hide the formula, if you teach high school, for example, um, and you're really interested because you know your kids are super techy and they can go and find all the answers in there, then you can change, I would change the name of the sheet to something like puzzle because then that name of the sheet does go into the um, goes into the formula itself and it's kind of harder for them to figure out what's going on within the formula if there's an, a, like a word that they don't really understand, right? You can change it to anything, you can change it to pillow. Um, it doesn't matter um, as long as you just change it into a word. Um, in this puzzle, one in the second sheet is where if you are going to hide your answers you would put all your answers in and where we're going to store our picture so i like to store the picture somewhere um, around here like in the w's and down below because again you don't have to it doesn't matter where you put it so this is where i would end up storing it but before we do that we have to create our picture so to do that to create our puzzle pieces i use this um, page called pinetools.com split image so we're going to split our image into even spaces 
um, into even pieces. And what I want to do in this case, usually I like to go with squared photos and my favorite size is 4x4 four four, because it gives you 16 questions, um, so it's plenty of practice. Um, but sometimes, you know, if you want to use a rectangular picture or if you need more questions and things like that, you can definitely change that around. So the one that I'm going to use today is going to be, I want 20, so I'm going to use um, a rectangular picture and I'm going to split it in 5x4. So I'm going to choose my image. I've actually already done it. I've um, done it here just to test it, but this is the picture that I'm going to be using. Um, it says when the cat gets in trouble for something that you did and it has this funny face. I figured um, kids that are learning multiplication would have, um, approve of this picture. So again, I just chose the file from my computer. I do want to split it both vertically and horizontally unless you wanted just long puzzle pieces for some reason. So I wanted them both. Um, I'm going to leave this as a JPEG. I want my vertical line, so split vertically five ways, and then because it's the longer side, and then horizontally four ways. So split four ways. Oh, I changed that to five, four. Once you have the dimensions that you want, you just go to split image, and it creates all of those puzzle pieces for you. And then you just have to click on one by one and it automatically downloads them, puts them in your download folder. So you would just click on all of those. And again, I've already done that and I've saved them all in a folder where I can easily find them. So now that I have that, I am just going to paste those pictures into here. Um, I do want to make note of where I'm pasting them at um, so that then I can easily find them in my formula sheet. So I am going to have a five by four grid and I'm starting at V268. So then that means I would go to 269, 270, and 271. Right, so I'm just writing those numbers down on paper so that I know where to find those puzzle pieces. And then I would have to go to W, um, X, Y, and Z, right? So it's going to embark all of those pieces there. So on V268 was the first one that I wrote down. I'm going to put my first puzzle piece. So I'm going to go to File, actually to Insert, <laughs> Image, In Cell. So we want to put the image inside of the cell and then just drag that first image in there. Or you can search your computer. And it's in there, it's nice and tiny, but this doesn't matter because we're going to resize the other page where we actually want it. I actually prefer for it to be super tiny. Um, so that then if students were to come searching here, they can't see the puzzle piece, right? But it's right there. And then I'm just going to go to the next one, insert, image, in cell, and then I would put my second one. Insert, image, in cell, and my third one. Insert, image and cell. Okay, so I am going to have to do all of this because again, I wanted to show you from scratch. So feel free to fast forward this piece as I insert all of them. I'm probably just going to upload the raw footage into YouTube because doing anything else takes forever. <laughs> um, I'm going to make these a little bit bigger just so you can see the picture if you're interested in it after. It makes it easy to make sure that you're on the right track. And then I do make them super tiny after. The good thing about this um, image splitter is that it does um, label your pictures. So like this one says row two, column three. So then I know that I'm in the right track. two, column four. So now I need row three, column one. It's coming along, it's coming along. <laughs> mm. 
And again, once you, you really only have to do this once. Um, then after this, you can just change this part and then everything that comes after is just like copying from the previous one. So that's the neat part about this. Um, unlike the pixel activities, which are also amazing to make, right? And kids love them, but they're just so much more work. So if you need something quicker and you've already made one of these before, um, these are much, much easier to um, make so that it's different and it's unexpected, right? Because you can't really, you can't use the same pixel picture um, with the same class because then they really know what the puzzle is. Um, but on this, you could just copy and paste super easily and just change that content around. It, it's also fun if you wanted to use the same sheet, like the same questions, and all you wanted to do was change the puzzles. Right, so like, so you can give different puzzles to different students, even though they're working on the same um, work, that would also be awesome. So that's the last one. And now we have our whole picture in here. And so if we wanted to see it nice and big, you can. Okay, so I remember I did write down where I have the picture at, just so that I remember where it is. I was in the 270s, right? So here's my picture. But because I don't want my students to see it, this was it's even if it's third graders, fourth graders, or whatever it is, um, I do want to eventually hide this, and I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so again, V two sixty eight was my first one, so I do like to write that down, um, so that then I know which pieces I still have to take care of. All right, sheet one. Now we're going to start creating the actual activity. So I do like to go and delete everything at the end. I'm gonna leave a couple of spaces in the top for instructions, and then obviously a couple of sheet um, pieces here in the side for the actual questions. Um, so I'm gonna start right around F5. And my puzzle pieces are rectangles, so I'm going to merge these pieces like so to make a rectangle. And again, we needed and you can easily just copy and paste these too. So copy, paste, 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 and paste. All right, the resizing can happen at the end so that you make sure that your picture is nice and neat. Um, we wanted by five, right? One, two, three, four. So four by four. And we want a four by five. All right, so something like this, this is what it looks like right now. If you wanted to make it a little bit smaller, we can, so that we can see the picture. Just highlighting all of them so I can resize that. Okay, so here's my block where my pieces are gonna come from. I'm gonna start building my activity here on the side, like the actual questions. So if this is how big it's gonna go, I think I'm okay with keeping them each in one row. So this would be problem one, and I am going to have 20 problems. Three, whoop. Three, four, five. You could drag and drop. Oh, there's the fill line. It's okay, let's do this, it's faster. 10, question would go here, answer would go here. So then I want more questions here. So I'm gonna need one more on the side. I'm gonna insert one left. And maybe one more so we can have a space in between. Or we can resize all this. So question here, answer, blank space, numbers. So 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and again, I will play around with all of this settings after. So my questions are going to go in here. They're just going to be simple multiplication problems. So 2 times 2, 
3 times 1. If you wanted to make it pretty, um, like with actual math in there, you can definitely do that using um, things like equatio. So I'm just going to do the first 10, and then you'll get the um, gist of how to finish it up. So if you wanted to finish watching the video after this, you can. 10, 0, and 1 times 1. Okay, so then I would need 20 problems because I do have 20 pieces. And then these are going to be the answers. So I put the answers in here first so that I know um, that my answers are correct after. 8, 0, 8, 12, 9, 0, 1, and 14. Okay, so those are the answers for that one. So we're ready to start with the actual coding here. Um, so that we can get all of our um, pieces showing up, okay? So again, I do like to use the power of copy and paste quite a bit, and we are going to make this pretty at the end, so don't worry about that, but maybe you already know how to do that, so you don't have to worry about that. Because these are simple numbers, I do like to first make sure that my format is set to just plain text. I like working with plain text a lot better than numbers because this is a... Um, formula sheet that it likes to create all kinds of different things when it comes to the numbers. Okay, so again, we're going to make it pretty, that part doesn't matter. We're going to start putting our formulas. But I do like the text because this is, this works with formulas, right? Sometimes um, it, it just does funky things and if you're not really good at um, at sheets and Excel and things like that, it's harder to troubleshoot. So if you're not good at doing that kind of stuff, working with plain text just works so much better because you're not going to throw off um, any of those formulas. Okay, so the first thing to decide is when they type in four, this answer here, which puzzle piece do I want to show up, right? You don't want it to go in order. You kind of want it to go all over the place. So I'm going to say I want this one here. And since we had started at V268, that would be this one, then this would be um, V, this would be W, right, the W column. And if this is 268, 269, 270, this would be V270. I mean W270. So that's a puzzle piece that I want it to appear if I type in 4. So this is where I want to put the formula in, in this sheet here. So I'm going to say equals, that's the formula that I want, and this is going to be an if and then formula. So if, and then I'm going to put or in here. It's an if or formula. And the reason why I want an if or formula is because sometimes you have more than one answer. In this case, we really don't, but it still helps. <laughs> because if you're going to copy and paste, you can um, easily change these around if you already have the formula set. So I'm going to say two here. So if... Um, this is where we want our formula in here. So what I want this to say is if that field, whoop, this field here, C5, right? So if C5 is equal to 2, but we want to put this in parentheses because we changed it to text, or, right? So sometimes it's good to, if you feel like your kids are going to go look for these formulas, um, I like to throw in, if I'm in, and you'll see a bunch of the ones that I created, fake answers in there that um, I know that if they looked at the formula and they picked one of those, then I know that they looked at the formula, right? So answers that they wouldn't come up with. Not trick answers, but answers that they wouldn't come up with. So for example, let's say you would also accept um, one half. I don't know why you would, but right, one over two. One over two. So let's say that that was the case. So it's saying if C5 is equal this or that, we're going to close that out. If it's equal to either of that, comma, then what do we want to happen? But what we want to happen is that we want it to go to sheet 2 and look for that puzzle piece. So if this is true, then we want that puzzle piece to go in there. Then we want this to go to rename this puzzle. Okay, so we want it to go to the puzzle sheet space here and then we wanted to find the field w 
um, 270. 270. So if that's true, that's where we want it to go. But you also have to say, well, what happens if it's false? Where if it's false, if it's not true, if they're putting in an answer that's wrong, then I just want it to be blank. So I'm just going to hit a space and the parenthesis. I'm going to copy and paste this, so then I could just keep copying and pasting and just changing small things here and there. Okay, so again, if or, so that you can, and you can have an endless amount of ors in there. If you wanted a bunch of different answers, um, if you would accept a bunch of different answers, you can put all of those different answers in there. You just have to make sure that you tell that, well, what happens if it's not true? Okay, so if it's true, I wanted to grab that puzzle piece, so hit enter. And actually, did I just, I think I put the wrong answer. Yeah, we don't want it to be two, we want it to be four. So that answer is supposed to be four. So there's my puzzle piece. We can resize this at the end, I, okay? So now we're gonna do the next one. Well, now I want maybe um, this answer. I'm gonna change, so that's what I like to do too, just for myself. Um, I'm gonna, once I, I already coded that answer, I changed the color of the field. So I'm gonna change it to baby blue. So we're gonna do the next one, three. All right, well, maybe I want this one here. This field here would be, we started at V, um, so that would be X268. This needs to be X268, so I'm gonna copy. Remember I had copied that, I'm gonna paste it. But now we don't want C5, we want C6. And we want C6 to equal, I already forgot that answer and I can't see it. Um, C6, I think it was three. But now we want that puzzle piece to be x, 268. And if not blank, oh, it was three, I was right. Um, so I'm gonna change this to baby blue because I already coded that one. And I'm gonna do another one. Maybe I want this piece here. And this piece here would be uh, x, y, uh, 271, y, 271. And we want that one to be equal to 8. I want this to be 8, and it was C7. And we want this to be Y271. There's that puzzle piece. So on and so forth. I finished this one. And really, that's it. And then once you go through and you erase those answers, all those puzzle pieces would come up. So the thing that I would do next is I would resize this. Actually, I'm not, I, I clicked the rows instead. Maybe that's too large. Right, I would resize it to where you want it. I do erase all the extra ones after so that the puzzle pieces show completely. So see now, I'm just erasing that, it's too big, maybe a little bit more, there it is. Now they're filling up that space nicely. Okay, so that's that. And then I would make this pretty, I want this one, and then this one to be the same size. All right, so you can change all of that. Now I wanna show, the next thing that I wanna show you is how do we um, hide the formulas? So let's say you didn't want this to say four here, right? You didn't want that to say four. Um, I'm gonna copy these answers so that I have the correct answers. Okay, so you didn't want it to actually say four. So you can go into the puzzle here and on any row, I'm gonna just put it here, okay? So I'm at G269. Okay, that's four. Okay. So I just copied that G269 on that on this sheet here. And then what I would do to hide these, I would change the background to white, but then I would also change the text to white. Because now they can't even see it. So you can totally change it, but the answer is there. Right, they're in there. That's why it's important that you write them down because then maybe you can't find them later. So now that you did that, 
your formula just changes a little bit. So why isn't that going away? I already pasted it. I'm just gonna, I just hated seeing those little lines. Okay, so this one, for example, it was C3. Which one was our first one? This one, C5. So instead of saying C5 is equal to, what we want is we want C5 equal to something different. Well, we wanted to equal what the other sheets equal to. So we're gonna say equals indirect, because we're leaving this page. And where are we indirectly going to? We're going to the sheet called puzzle. And what do we want it to equal? We want it to equal G269. Okay, so it's going there. And then it just says C5 equals one half. That's just because again, you would know if they put in an answer in there that they didn't want. It's just another way to be a little bit tricky. Okay, so I'm gonna hit enter. It's probably not gonna work right now. I need to change this here to also be plain text. And did I spell, oh, I did spell it capital letter. This is puzzle, like that. So all of that matters because this is super smart. I'm trying to see if I, oh, I spelled indirect wrong. <laughs> indirect, and now we wanna go to puzzle G269. There it is, okay? But this is so much harder for them to read, right? I mean, what does this even mean? And then now you can take this extra answer out if you wanted to, you don't need it there. Okay, so that's one way to hide it and you can do that to all of these. So this was our second one. So then we can have C equals indirect puzzle, and that would be G270. Okay, so as long as those answers match the other sheet, then um, the puzzle pieces will also work. So that's one way to hide it. And then what you would do at the end, you wanna hide this all together. So I'm gonna, I like to take all these out and then hide. So it's just like hiding and hiding and hiding and hiding. So hide column C. All right, so it looks like this. I would definitely take all of these fields and make them small so they all look the same. And just go all the way up to the top and then we are going to right click and hide sheet. So that sheet's gone. We don't even need it because we already wrote down what it is that we need. That's it. So the, the only thing that's left now is to make this nice and pretty. So this top one, I like to first merge the whole thing. That's where my, um, these two top ones. So on this one, I would put a title. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger center it and it's okay because I am going to erase all the extra nice and big font maybe a 24 and we would say multiplication facts practice or maybe practice with multiplication facts and then we are going to change the I love that to my favorite and then we're, I want this to be centered this is going to be our directions. So then I would put directions, um, multiply each of the given, or complete each of the, mul I don't know how, I teach high school, so I don't wanna be too wordy. Complete the multipli multiplication problems given. Your answers are correct. A puzzle piece will appear on the, let's make it green, on the green box on the right. Uh, 
All right, so in here, when you're in here, if you highlight any piece, so I like to make the directions word bold. So I'm gonna make the whole thing size 12. Change it to a uh, maybe Alice. And then I like to make this bold and the color that I said it would be, so green. Maybe like a dark forest green. So then I'm gonna change all of these to a dark forest green to match. So again, this is just the making a pretty part. It's where the puzzle pieces are gonna come up. I do wanna go and I wanna delete, so I'd like to leave a border. So from S all the way to the end, I'm gonna delete all these. And then I'm also gonna delete all the extra ones at the bottom that I don't need. But I do like to leave a border. Delete, delete. So there they are. So now it's nice and easy. At the end too, I do like to go and remove um, the other things that I need. So remember, um, maybe I should move this to 75% now because you can't see the whole thing at 100. It's just my screen's um, small right now so that I can record everything at the same time. All right, so these are my problem numbers. So I want all these to be formatted the same, so I'm gonna highlight them all together. Size, I don't know, 14, so it's nice and big. Center and center. Um, I do like the Alice font, so I'm gonna keep that. And then I want, maybe make them bold. I like that. Now these, I'm gonna do the same, but I want these here to eventually have that same format, 14, Alice, nope, we're gonna keep maybe Times New Roman on that one, just because it's math type. Let's keep it in the aerial for now. I do want them to be centered and centered. And then these, I like to make the answers where they're gonna answer. I like to make those really big. Um, so I'm probably gonna make these size 18 so that they know that they actually type something in there. And I do like to make their answer columns. Um, oh, that's what I need. I need to make them the same size. And I like to make them all a color, right? So eventually they're all going to be baby blue as I'm, co um, as I'm coloring them and you can give them those instructions. Um, here, I am going to box these out. I like thick boxes, so I'm going to change my border color and I mean my border thickness and then the same thing. I think we can make these even a little bit smaller. And these a little bit bigger. I think I'm going to change them to 18 too though. Okay, so that's that. It looks better, but I do want another column here on the side. You can see the one to the right. I'm going to make this one white now until I figure out what background color I want but I want my distance here all around it to be equal and I want it to be this tiny so changes all of them um, I don't need this one here so I'm going to delete it this directions can definitely be bigger complete the multiplication problems given and type your answers in the blue fields. I'm gonna change this to blue. So then there's more instructions there. If your answers are correct, a puzzle piece will appear on the green box on the right. Perfect. What you can also do here is we can make this wrap and we can also center it. 
um, this part here, I probably want a 24 just for the directions part. Perfect. And let's make this even bigger then. All right, so that looks nice. I like it. We can um, highlight all this and then view, take the red lines out. Eventually when you're done with putting in all of those um, puzzle pieces in, you also want to view and you want to hide that formula bar so they can't see the formula bar at all. This will copy, um, when they copy the work, it will copy with that formula bar not being there. So unless they know how to go and unhide it, they can't unhide it. So that's pretty much all of it, um, how to make it pretty, um, how, and there's so many more things that you can play around with. Um, I would also give all of this a particular background color. So since this is dark green, I'm gonna make the rest of it a super light green. And there's a super cool tool. So like since I'm clicking just one of them, the paint roller, and then when I roll it, it copies that. And just roll the paint roller, copy. I'm gonna make all of it here green. Just copy the last one and roll the paint roller. All right, so, so much nicer. All right, let's finish coating this. If you want to stick around, you can to see the finished product, but you don't have to. That's pretty much all of it. Go back if you need to, to any pieces of it. Um, actually, I'm just going to end the video here. I think it's long enough. It's 20 minutes. If you have any questions, though, please leave them in the um, comments. I will definitely post links to all of these once they're completed and I'll post a picture of this on the thumbnail so you can see what it looks like at the end. Um, I'll also post pictures of all of these on that buy me a coffee page and if you're a member of the pixel group on Facebook if you're not you should be there's over 25,000 of us in there now um, and there's tons of free activities um, I'll also post those there. Um, I'll see you on the next video maybe. Bye!